First, Denver police are investigating what they call a bias motivated crime in Denver City Park after the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Monument was found vandalized this morning. So I spoke with members of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Colorado Holiday Commission about why this vandalism is especially hurtful. The Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial in Denver City Park often evokes emotion for those who see it. But on this day, it's just it's just sad. It's just really sad. You know, like people are still doing things like this. The tears for Leslie Howard stem from the pain of learning parts of this memorial were ripped out. I thought it was going to be graffiti or something, you know. Leslie says, unfortunately, vandalism has happened here before. But this time, I don't know what we're going to do to fix this. It's different. The monument, as you walk around it, it tells a story. Of Dr. Vern L. Howard, Howard, Leslie's father, and the head of Colorado's Dr. King Holiday Commission surveys the damage. I was the project manager, and this was like attacking one of my children. In 2001, Howard brought Denver's first black first lady, Wilma Webb's vision for this memorial to life. I literally was working 18 to 20 hour days to make it happen. Sources close to the situation say tools were likely used to remove the bronze details and this missing panel. Each of these placards are about an inch and a half, three inches thick. And Howard says the one panel alone was worth $75,000. This piece here is very heavy. It, it's very heavy. They're not going to be able to just carry it out. I mean, it, it was a coordinated effort. I believe that there is evil and hate in their hearts. But Howard says he refuses to let that hate flourish. No matter what you do and how you do it, in all reality, this is a symbol of great people, a great man who spoke of peace and love. However, this will not deter us. We will continue to march. We will continue to seek justice. Now, Micah, as we talk more about this, really the timing of this vandalism during Black History Month, it really can heighten the personal impact of this crime for many people. It can, Jason, and I just I just want to take a moment and add a little bit of context here. This isn't just a mass of static statues in the middle of a park. This is a sacred place for so many people here in Denver and in Colorado. This is a place where marches and parades step off, a place of reflection for people to think about how far we've come as a people. So when we talk about vandalism to this specific place, this is heartbreaking for so many in our community. And as they mentioned in that story, not just some paint that can be wiped off. These are very difficult pieces to, that will now have to potentially be replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, now, over the years, Colorado has seen monuments meant to represent marginalized groups vandalized or stolen. In 2020, a statue of Martin Luther King Jr. and Emmett Till in Pueblo was defaced. White paint was splashed on the statues, and a nearby walkway had KKK painted on it. The statue and walkway were cleaned up shortly after. Pueblo police say, or said, at the time they were investigating it as a bias motivated crime, but no arrests were made. And just last week, one of Denver's historic Chinatown markers was taken from 16th and Wazi. Organizers with Colorado Asian Pacific United say they don't know how or why it was taken, potentially all the way back to December, but they're pleading with the thief to return it. No questions asked. A GoFundMe for a replacement has raised $6,000 of their $12,000 goal. If you would like to donate, we do have a verified link included in this story up on Denver7.com.